Next on the Broadway show, Back from the Dead, I'm talking to Alex Brightman about the return of Beetlejuice. Plus, Jen Gambatiste is here to talk about Mrs. Doubtfire the musical and her incredible Broadway career. And Moulin Rouge the musical is coming soon to a city near you. You'll meet the stars. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show. I'm so glad you could be here for another totally jam-packed episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Hey folks, ain't it pretty? Look who's back in New York City! He's the ghost with the most, and he's back from the dead. Beetlejuice is back on Broadway at the Marquee Theater. I had a chance to sit down with the star, Alex Brightman. Beetlejuice, let's talk about it. Let's people talk are, about it. People are excited. People I'm are, one of those I people. Mean, is it different every time getting back on stage, I guess after this amount of time, uh, the oh, pandemic God. and the, I don't know, what's on your mind? My, well, yes, first of all, to answer your first question, it was Im nearly impossible to get back to this stamina-wise, energy-wise, comedically, because how much of an audience do you have during a pandemic? Kind of nobody. The dog's tired of it. My dog is so tired of me. <laughs> yeah, I, my wife actually, thankfully, was great. I mean, like she really, I think she gets a kick out of me. Who's to say? Yeah. I, I think know. she really does though, and I get a kick out of her in, in tandem. <laughs> and we're both funny, so I think that's helpful. But after that, you come back to like a room full of people to try and be funny and also like orchestrate the show, because that's kind of my job, is to sort of be, mm -hmm. be this ringmaster. And it was difficult for the first couple of days just because I didn't know how to musical theater anymore. But coming back to it after two years of thinking about it, because I certainly wasn't done with it when we closed. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone was. There's so many ideas now that we've now let sort of play out in the rehearsal process. And that I am like oddly grateful for the time because now I had some perspective on it and kind of grew up two years and now have new jokes, new bits all of which I'm getting encouraged to do on stage, even oh. some improv, which is like really fun. I have the freedom to be very much in the moment mm -hmm. and the smallest of moments, being able to look at the crowd and if you know somebody feeds me something or if somebody has done something or they're talking or they're on their phone, it, it no longer is a safe place for them. And I say that in a great way right. because I'm able to go, hey, hey you. And that's great. And there's so many new experiences that everybody I feel like went through together versus maybe two years ago, I don't know, everyone came from different places, sure. came and sat down in the theater, and now everybody collectively has really gone through a lot together. And everybody, I think, wants to laugh. I mean, and our show, I mean, it's weird because our show is about death. So it's like considering the last two years coming back, it is funny to be in a show to that, that sort of laughs in the face of it, but I think it's good. I think that's therapizing in a way. Welcome to a show about death. Give me a day in, in the life for you um, now that you know, you're back on stage. What's a day look like? Because you're working, full. your wife's working. Yeah, everything's full, thankfully, because it didn't used to be in the last two years, and that was a nightmare to have to wake up and yeah. either task yourself to do something or not. But now having a schedule to then fit other things into, that's where I thrive. So a typical day is I wake up at seven-ish, I walk my dog, um, I come home, I drink a, so much coffee, and then kind of between the hours of around 8 and 11, it's like when I get my best writing done, because that's been another part of my career, is writing musicals or writing television shows or, thing, or pitching cartoons or things like that. And then giving myself little breaks here and there, but then it's rehearsal. For the most part, two feet in the pool, in rehearsal, focused. Especially now because of what we've gone through in the last two years and for health, my radius is pretty tight. So I only do the things I need to do so as not to get, you know, get sick or get my family sick, which I've been successful at. So everyone always says, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? I'd like to ask you, where do you see yourself, when you look at yourself now and you go back 10 years, do you think you'd be, have been here? Oh God, no. No, I think I'm ambitious, but I don't, I'm totally realistic about what's going on and how many actors there are and just creative people in general. I mean, I also know what I look like, so it's like, <laughs> I don't say that, that to, I don't, well, here's what I mean, <laughs> is 10 years ago, my idea of a leading man was somebody who was like, had a six pack, looked like Gaston, and could sing high tenor stuff with no warming up. And I'm the but opposite. But that's what it of, was 10 years ago. Right. That's what it was. But I think like with the, when School of Rock happened and they trusted me with that role, it sort of, me and a couple of others, I'm not the only pioneer of this, redefined what it meant to just be a leading man. It didn't, there wasn't a type anymore. Right. It's just that you led the show. So I've been really happy that that's been the case because I like doing it. 
Um, but no, not in a million years that I think one would be leading any show, but two be nominated for both, which is also <laughs> absurd. I think also what I attribute it to is momentum. I think that you, you see something that's going well and you don't just ride on that. You go, okay, well, how can I use this for the next thing? Now that people are turning their attention to me, maybe I'm a writer, maybe I'm this, right. and, and I'll actually get people to read my stuff. Whereas it took 10 years ago, so it was so much harder to get people sure. to read a page of my work. Sure. So it's really nice. I mean, it's afforded me so many cool things, but not in a bazillion years would I believe it would be like this. I'm very happy. Let's talk Tonys, because a cutoff for Tony eligibility is this coming Thursday. 34 productions are vying for Broadway's top honors, 13 musicals and 21 plays. Nominations will be announced Tuesday, May 3rd, and the big night is Sunday, June 12th. Here's one for the poppets. Jen Gambatiz is here to talk about Mrs. Doubtfire and her longtime Broadway career. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Jen Gambatiz has starred in some of my favorite Broadway shows. Today I'm going to tell you about all of them with Jen Gambatiz. Hey! How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's so good to see you. It's so good to be seen and to see you. You look fabulous. We're going to go for a little walk. Yes. We're going to talk. We're going to walk and talk. We're going to walk and talk. Right, right actors can do that. Broadway actors can walk and talk <laughs> at the same time. So here we are. This is actually a really important theater in your history, the yes. Neil Simon Theater. Yes. What happened at this theater? Oh, just a little joyride called Hairspray. Hairspray. Yeah. You, now, wait a minute. Hairspray, that was a big hit. It was a big fat hit, big as they call it. Big <laughs> fat hit. You were Brenda? That's right. Originally, I did I get the, that right? One I of the was... nicest kids in town. OG nine months. That but was me. you also had a fantastic run here as Penny Pingleton. I did, yeah. I got to kind of come in and out a couple times as Penny, which was a great gift. Right. Um, and I was mentioning to you, the first Broadway show I ever saw was Across the Street. So right. it was very... Yeah. You saw oh, City of Angels across City the street, of Angels. and then you and got then to. I got to be here, and it was huge. It was one of those sort of like cultural moments, and then I remember when we were doing the out of town in Seattle, and Jack O'Brien saying to us after the first preview, like, "It's not always like this," because there were so many younger actors, and he just didn't want us to think like, "Oh, well, this is what a Broadway out of town tryout is," because yeah. it's not always that. And that cast, that cast is amazing. I know you guys are all close, and it's just... we're family. Yeah. I mean, that's family. But we, I would always say, even at the time, like the bench was so deep. You know, you had the stars who were stars, yeah. and then in the ensemble, you had all of these like future stars, yeah. um, and it was really cool. So here we are at here the are. Winter Garden at the Theater. Winter Garden. This is a really nice, fancy theater. I love playing this house. It is kind of wide. Yeah, it's like kind of, it's like. It seats a lot of people, but somehow it still feels yes. intimate. And then like the history of this theater, I'm such like a history nerd. So you know, right? This used to be like a stable. Right, that's right. That the horses yes, and stuff. Table, yes. So then when they like, sometimes they'll still find like straw. Like, <laughs> I don't believe that. For that, real? Yeah, well, I don't know if now, but back in the day, that maybe when like Angela Lansbury was here. <laughs> but that's it too, right? You had, you know, Barbara Streisand and Funny Girl, yes. Angela Lansbury and Mame. So you just, you walk in this theater and you, it's like goosebumps. This is also where I had cats crawl on me as a kid as because a kid, cats played yes. here. And you got to work with Andrew Lloyd Webber in School of Rock. Yes, I mean, I was a replacement, so I didn't get a lot of time right. with Sir Andrew. Right. But I I did get to do School of Rock here. That's where, you I, did. where I did. And you were fantastic in it. So this pile of scaffolding. Indeed. Behind all of that is the Palace Theater. Something, as in Judy plays the palace. Something Judy, legendary. Judy played the palace and so did Jen. Yes. Jen played the palace. <laughs> I did. And all shook up. And all shook up. Which is a show that I have a lot of affection for. Oh, so many people it was, do. It was such a sweet show. Such a sweet show. The timing was a little tricky. Good vibrations had opened before us. Right. Which was a, a a less effective jukebox musical yeah. and i think critics kind of wanted also to... people weren't really it was based on the songs of elvis yes um people became more accepting of jukebox musicals since then yes definitely right? and it was you know the memo didn't quite make it out enough that it was the songs of elvis but Instead it wasn't about elvis. Of elvis right and cheyenne looked a lot like elvis cheyenne minus Jackson. when they tried to make him blonde at the macy's parade oh, wow. and then quickly put the kibosh on that <laughs> So it didn't really run. That's what we're trying to get that's to. That's right, that's right. But, but the people who saw it loved it. People who saw it loved it. And I always say with that show, the proof is in the pudding because it is done everywhere. You know, yes. colleges, yeah. community theaters. Um, it will play Broadway again, I think, and it will get its due. Jen. Yes. 
More scaffolding. More scaffolding. We think it might be a metaphor for like <laughs> building Broadway back sure. or restructuring my career. I don't know. <laughs> this is a court theater. You were in a show here, I saw it, A Year with Frog and Toad. That's right. You played a bunch of animals. I played, uh, I think we're allowed to say it on air, Bitchy Bird and, um, and, and a very sweet mouse and a, a squirrely squirrel and a um, young frog in flashback and a mole. And I think all the kind. mouse might have been the one that you were really... really the mouse was really my really main, yeah. Equipped for though too. Oh, a sweet mouse. Yes, a sweet mouse. Thank you. I'm like, are you calling me short? What are you calling me? <laughs> this is where it all started. Broadway debut. Everybody cut, everybody cut. Put this. <laughs> that was like a, a young cast. Like yeah. that was like a bunch of kids your age. Everybody kind of like a, just a, a whole posse of 20 somethings playing high schoolers and living their best Broadway lives. You also did something else very epic in this theater. Yes, I did. Like, Epic. You were in Tarzan. You were yeah, Jane. I was Jane. You flew. I flew. That, that, that was a crazy production. It was. It, I always joke, you know, I had never gone to an audition where I needed to put on a crash helmet before. <laughs> and, you know, the structure was surrounded by, um, like, the, this, these inflatable walls. Yes. So it was, it was very a, safe. It was one and, of those, like, yeah, gyms it, that you take your kids to. Yeah. You know, not a lot of people can say they've flown over the audience in this theater, but you did. I did, but not that often. Uh, we that that only lasted like a few previews. Oh really? Where we I got run. lucky to see that. Yeah. That was terrifying. It was terrifying for me. I don't know how it felt for yeah, you. Yeah. Well, we were like hightailing it from backstage to the back of the theater and then flew over. No, I loved the flying. I wish we had done more of it actually. Jen, it's the Lyceum Theater. You were in a really funny comedy called Is He Dead? Is He Dead? Question, question mark. mark. With Norbert Leo Butts yes. in drag. It was written by Mark Twain and then adapted yes. by David it, Ives. Yes, yeah. all of that. He kind of helped Mark Twain whittle it down. I think there were nine of us. It was hilarious. Um, it was so funny. Broad farce. Broad farce. It was It was one of those plays that was like just a step below a musical in terms of heightened yes. reality. And in fact, in the curtain call, we danced a little bit. Yeah. I mean, just amazing yeah. people. Yes, hello. I can't do the voice. But <laughs> here we are. We're here. Steven Sondheim Theater, formerly the Henry Miller's Theater. Yes. This is your current home, yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. This show is so joyful and beautiful and fun and what the world needs right I now, think right? So. I mean, this is what we're giving audiences sort of yeah. like just a big. It's just like a balm for the heart. It's a balm for the yeah. heart. Yeah. I love how the character has really sort of grown for the musical version. Well, I think that's possible. That's what's possible in musicals. You know, yeah. you take like a, a comedic movie, and you can sort of only do so much. You s let the characters start to sing, and then you peel back the layers of the onion a bit. You get to know them a little bit more because you hope you do if they're singing about it. <laughs> What is it like taking this tour around the theater district? I mean, like you've sort of, you, you even said to me, like you have different memories at different corners. Yeah. What is it like doing this? It's, it's like, it's the best feeling of like, look, I made a hat a little bit. <laughs> also, you know, the memories of the people. I think you go to the buildings and it's the people. I don't know, it just feels real good. There's still a whole lot more to talk about on this edition of the Broadway show. Coming up, it's the revival of an old classic, but she's still one of Broadway's fresh new faces. You'll get to know Gabby Beans. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. It's Thornton Wilder's classic play, The Skin of Our Teeth, and it opens this week on Broadway. And one of the show's stars is making her Broadway debut, Gabby Beans. She's this week's fresh face. Hi, I'm Gabby Beans. I'm playing Sabina in The Skin of Our Teeth at Lincoln Center Theater. I'm an army brat, so I moved like every two years for most of my life. I think that's part of the reason why I'm an actor, is just like going from place to place and having to adapt to different environments very quickly and kind of figure out where you fit in. But I always wanted to be a performer. I remember I told my mom, like I think in the sixth grade, I'm like, I think I want to be a professional actor. And she was like, no. I went to school for something completely different. I took like one acting class in undergrad 
and I was studying neuroscience and I was pre-med and I was like getting ready to like go to med school. And then right before I was getting ready to like take my MCAT, I had this voice that told me, girl, if you don't give acting a shot, you are going to regret it for the rest of your life. So instead of applying for medical school, much to my parents' chagrin, I applied to acting school and luckily got in. It was one of the turning points of my like life, for sure. <laughs> a big part of the reason why I wanted to become an actor was because my parents, we would take trips, our family, to New York and we would see Broadway shows. We saw The Lion King, we saw Into the Woods, we saw Oklahoma, like all the classic, Wicked. And I just remember being so transported by those experiences and just like my mind was just completely snatched by, by being sitting in those houses and watching those performers work. So now to be able to do that is is literally just like living a dream. The thing that's so beautiful about this show and the company is that the show is like this kind of kaleidoscopic, mesmerizing vision of New York in a way. Like everyone's represented. We are really the manifestation of our ancestors' wildest dreams, grappling with the reality that our dreams are coming true and we're, you know, black and brown bodies in this space, in this like epic Lincoln Theater historical space, making something new. Being on Broadway is a complete dream come true. The Moulin Rouge is a state of mind. Welcome to the Moulin Rouge, wherever you are. Paul Wontorek caught up with the stars of the Moulin Rouge tour, Connor Ryan and Courtney Reed. Thanks, Tamsin. Moulin Rouge, the musical, is coming to a city near you, and it's bound to be spectacular, especially with Courtney Reed and Connor Ryan leading the charge as Satine and Christian. I met up with the talented duo during their final week of New York rehearsals prior to taking the show on the road. Was there a chemistry test between you two? Yes, yes there was, yes, and there we was. won the test. Yeah, we <laughs> aced it. Tell me about that. What, what, what was that like? Did you know each other before this? No, that's no. that's where we met. That's where we met. Yeah, that's where we met. Yeah, it was it was you and I and Aaron Tveit and Natalie Mendoza and Lisi and Lisi LaFontaine La and Jamie, Jamie. Bogio, who are doing it in yeah. London. Yeah, so we all kind of we got you know we got to Wait, meet each other. Wait, why were they at your chemistry test? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We so were like, get out of here, you don't matter. <laughs> no, we, it, so it was so interesting because the boys were all cast, so and the girls weren't cast right. yet, and they were bringing the girls in to sort of do a mix and match. And so we were like, oh my gosh, like, wait, did we book it? Or like, okay, no, I don't know, like, did we book it? Like, I don't know. Um, and then we booked it. This romance is all about extremely heightened emotions. It's like uh, everything is just really amped up, so it must have been interesting to nail that in an audition room with someone you don't really know. Yeah, I remember like us to, like, just trying so hard like to like manufacture the all that emotion in the, in this audition. Like I don't know you and I'm just like, like yeah. And like I remember like it was, you know, the scene ended and you were just like you're like, you know, like in my arms and you you were like, are you okay? Like are you are you good? It's like, oh yeah. I can't wait to see your Christian. Because these characters, Christian and Satine, they are in such different worlds at the top of this show. And I can kind of see, you guys are very different, but it's gonna be really exciting to see you together. You have got to see this boy play you Christian. He it. is like everything that you want a Christian to be. And you know how when you're you're cast in a role, you're usually like it's not that far off from like who you are in life. Like you are totally Christian in real life, yeah. like hundred percent. <laughs> He's so good. His vocals are incredible. The acting is spot on. It's just it it a lot. I feel like a lot of the show um, rides on his shoulders, and he is just like carrying that weight in such a beautiful you. way. You, you, oh, no, you. No, you. Beautiful and perfect, and so easy to fall in love with. And oh, oh my goodness! Oh, you, oh my gosh, her Satine is flawless. What about somebody who doesn't know anything about this show, and it's it's coming to their town? I mean, that's kind of the ultimate Broadway experience, isn't it? Right. It really is. It has it's everything. It has everything. What what more could you want? 
in, in a show. It, it, there's the, I mean, the set design is phenomenal and so colorful and vibrant. Uh, you have incredible talent on the stage doing like what they do best. It's just wrapped in all this fabulousness, this sparkly, this pop music and the costumes and the lights and the dancing and it's it's just like this beautiful little thing wrapped in this most extravagant package. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel and this is the Broadway Show. Thanks for watching.